the unspeakable secrets of the Inca Empire's traditional intimacy. Ever wondered about the taboo secrets of the Inca Empire's lovemaking practices? From divine inbreeding to dark rituals, let's delve into a world where sacred tradition met unspeakable desires. Number one, sacred kinship and marital customs. Picture a ruler, the Sapa Inca, draped in regal splendor, his throne perched on the peaks of Machu Picchu. His claim to divine ancestry wasn't just a political maneuver, it was a cosmic declaration. To maintain the purity of the son's lineage coursing through his veins, he took his own sister as his main wife, the revered Koya. This union, seemingly unconventional in our modern gaze, was a reflection of the Inca cosmos, a celestial dance that bound the ruler to the heavens. Marriages in the Inca Empire weren't left to chance or the whims of hearts. No, they were orchestrated with meticulous precision, a celestial ballet choreographed by a special official. This matchmaker, a cupid in the service of the state, ensured that unions aligned with the cosmic harmony the Incas held dear. Love, in the Inca world, was not merely a matter of the heart, it was a celestial duty. But this wasn't just a story of celestial unions. It was a tale of regulated passion, where the fires of love were stoked with the approval of the state. The Sapa Inca's choice to marry his sister wasn't a taboo, but a duty, a sacred pledge to maintain the divine bloodline that flowed through the veins of the empire. In the chambers of power, where earthly desires met celestial obligations, the Inca rulers navigated a delicate dance. Their inbreeding unions weren't solely about flesh and blood, they were a cosmic ballet, a dance with the stars that echoed through the annals of history. And so, the Inca Empire stood, not just as a conqueror of lands, but as a keeper of celestial kinship. In the sacred embrace of rulers and their sisters, the empire found its strength, its divine purpose, written in the union of mortal hearts, bound by blood and celestial decree. It was a love story written in the stars, where the sun and the moon blessed unions that, to the uninitiated eye, seemed unspeakable. Number two, marital dissolution and adultery. Imagine a world where the warmth of the sun kissed golden fields, and the people believed their ruler, the Sapa Inca, was a child of that radiant orb. To preserve this divine lineage, the Sapa Inca chose a path that would make even the bravest among us shudder. He took his sister as his main wife, a practice known as Koya. To the Inca, this wasn't mere scandal. It was a cosmic reflection, a union mirroring the harmony of their world. But love, as it often does, played a hand in complicating this divine dance. The Sapa Inca, draped in regal robes and adorned with the wisdom of generations, not only navigated the complexities of sibling matrimony, but also wielded power over the unions of his subjects. In the tapestry of Inca marriages, threads were tightly woven, each knot carefully inspected by a designated official. The pursuit of love was a regulated affair, with the state acting as the silent matchmaker, orchestrating unions based on a predetermined plan. Picture this, young hearts bound not solely by the strings of affection, but also by the invisible hand of the empire. Yet, love, like a river, refuses to be tamed. In defiance of these strict regulations, a glimmer of rebellion sparkled in a custom known as Servinakui. Here, young couples were granted a trial period to test the waters of matrimony, to live together before committing to the solemn vows. It was a clandestine rebellion, a brief respite from the structured dance orchestrated by the state. In the quiet corners of the empire, love whispered its secrets, and young hearts fluttered in the face of tradition. But, dear listener, love's journey through the Inca empire was not a path strewn solely with rose petals. The state, in its infinite wisdom, insisted on fertility among its subjects. A wife's barrenness became the only valid grounds for the dissolution of marriage. Imagine the weight of such a decree, where the inability to bear life could sever the sacred bond of matrimony. The rivers of emotion flowed, and tears carved their paths through the intricate landscape of love as couples faced the stark reality of this decree. Yet, in the intricate dance of fidelity, a shadow lurked in the corners, adultery, a serpent that slithered through the sacred garden of matrimony. In the Inca Empire, the punishment for such transgressions was severe. Death cast its long shadow over those who dared to betray the sanctity of the marital vows. The state, with its watchful gaze, ensured that the threads of loyalty remained unbroken, weaving a tapestry of consequence for those who dared to stray. Number 3. Polygamy and Harems Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a queen for a day, basking in the ruler's favour? 
In the Inca Empire, the Sapa Inca, the supreme leader, didn't stop at just one queen. He reveled in the opulence of multiple wives and concubines. As the sun's last rays painted the sky, the Sapa Inca's palace shimmered like a jewel, housing not just a ruler, but a man surrounded by the allure of feminine grace. The Sapa Inca, born from the divine lineage of the sun, held a celestial responsibility. To maintain the sanctity of this divine bloodline, he took not one, but several wives. His court resembled a tapestry woven with the threads of power, desire, and intrigue. Peasants were confined to the simplicity of one wife, while the nobility and the rich indulged in the extravagance of small harems. Picture the Daughters of the Sun, a select group of women chosen through an annual process overseen by a special official. These women, like jewels in a royal crown, were the chosen consorts of the Sapa Inca. The air in the palace was thick with the scent of exotic perfumes, and the rustle of luxurious fabrics echoed in the corridors. Each wife and concubine had a role, a place in the intricate dance of courtly life. But behind the gilded facade of privilege lay a world strictly regulated by tradition. The life of these women was not one of unbridled freedom. It was a delicate balance of prestige and confinement. They lived in a world where a misstep could lead to severe consequences. The official overseeing the selection process ensured not only beauty, but also adherence to the strict rules governing the Sapa Inca's court. The wives were not just ornaments, they were pawns in a grand political chess game. Marriages were strategic alliances, weaving a web of loyalty and power across the empire. The Sapa Inca himself, a master of this intricate game, juggled the responsibilities of both ruler and husband to his carefully chosen companions. The palace was a labyrinth of emotions, ambitions and desires. Jealousies simmered beneath the surface, concealed by smiles and veiled glances. The Sapa Inca's attention was a coveted prize, and the competition among his wives was a silent but fierce struggle for favor. Yet, despite the complexities, the harems symbolized unity and diversity, a microcosm of the vast empire they represented. In the moonlit chambers, the Sapa Inca's wives navigated a world where power and passion intertwined. The air hummed with whispered secrets, and the walls bore witness to clandestine rendezvous. The Sapa Inca, burdened with the weight of divine responsibility, sought solace in the arms of his chosen companions, each contributing to the legacy of the empire. But as the stars adorned the night sky, the shadows in the palace deepened, revealing the darker side of the opulent court. Behind closed doors, the women faced not only the allure of privilege, but also the price of disobedience. The consequences of stepping out of line were severe, a reminder that even in the embrace of luxury, danger lurked in the corners of the harem. Number 4. Sexual Aphrodisiacs and Anaphrodisiacs As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of orange and pink over the majestic Andean peaks, the Sapa Inca, a figure both revered and feared, grappled with the challenges of managing an extensive harem. The empire demanded strength, both on the battlefield and in the intricacies of the royal bedchamber. The ruler's choice of consorts carried weight, not just in matters of the heart, but in the destiny of the empire itself. In the quest to navigate to the labyrinth of desire, the Sapa Inca turned to the bounties of the land. Coca leaves, the green jewels of the Andes, became more than a symbol of spiritual connection. They became a key to unlocking the gates of passion. The ruler would chew these leaves, feeling the surge of vitality coursing through his veins as if the very essence of the sun had entered his being. It was a ritual that transcended the physical, a communion with the elements that fueled the fiery bonds within the harem. But nature's offerings went beyond the humble coca leaf. In the hidden corners of the empire, a peculiar secret was guarded, the power of worms. These small enigmatic creatures possessed a dual nature, their existence a delicate balance between pleasure and danger. Some worms, when harnessed with care, became potent aphrodisiacs, invoking disasters that mirror the passion of the Andean landscapes. Others, however, concealed a darker side, their poisons capable of silencing the most ardent flames of lust. The Sapa Inca, a master of this intricate dance, knew when to unleash the aphrodisiac powers of these creatures. The royal harem, a mosaic of beauty and intrigue, echoed with the whispers of secrets known only to those who walk the corridors of power. The ruler's knights were adorned with the intoxicating scent of passion, a carefully orchestrated symphony of desires that resonated through the empire. Yet, in the pursuit of conquest, the Sapa Inca understood the importance of control. An aphrodisiacs, the silent guardians of discipline, played a crucial role in the grand tapestry of imperial rule. 
As the empire expanded its borders, its soldiers marched forth with a restraint that defied the primal urges of conquest. The secret lay in the subtle administration of anaphrodisiacs, substances that tempered the flames of desire and kept the warriors focused on the mission at hand. Picture the vast landscapes of the Andes, where armies moved like shadows against the backdrop of towering peaks. The very essence of discipline, woven into the fabric of anaphrodisiacs, ensured that the conquests of the Inca Empire were marked not by unbridled chaos, but by a strategic and calculated march. Number 5. Prostitution and Social Regulations in the realm of the Incas, war was not merely a clash of arms, but a theatre of fate, where destinies intertwined with every conquered breath. It was amid the spoils of war that the empire faced an unavoidable reality. The presence of captured women torn from their homes and thrust into the unfamiliar arms of conquerors. These women, termed Pampirunas, were destined for a life less ordinary. Imagine the dust settling after a victorious battle, the eye thick with tension and the scent of conquest. As the captured woman stood at the mercy of their conqueros, fate cast its die. Rather than turning a blind eye to the inevitable, the Inca rulers devised a pragmatic solution to her regulated prostitution. Pachacutec, the wise ruler who gazed upon the world from his imperial heights, understood the volatile nature of human desires. With a stroke of his imperial pen, he etched guidelines into the annals of Inca law. The Pampirunas, deemed necessary yet dangerous, were allowed to exist, but with strings attached. These women, uprooted from their origins, were denied the comfort of settling in villages or towns. Instead, they became wandering spirits, traversing the empire's vast landscapes like nomads of passion. Their presence, a testament to both the spoils of war and the empire's calculated leniency. As the sun dipped behind the towering Andean peaks, casting long shadows upon the ancient stones, the Pampirunas plied their trade under the watchful eyes of the rulers, the dim glow of torchlight illuminated the clandestine transactions, a dance between survival and servitude. But what about the offspring born from these liaisons? In the Incas' intricate web of societal regulations, even the consequences of passion were foreseen. Children born to the Pampirunas were not left to the whims of fate. Instead, the state cradled these innocent lives in its bureaucratic arms, adopting them into the collective bosom of the empire. In the heart of the Inca society, where duty and desire collided, paradox unfolded. While the rulers permitted the existence of prostitution, they did so with a stern gaze, ensuring that the bundoris of social order remained intact. The pragmatic approach of the Inca rulers, faced with the stark realities of conquest, unveiled a face of their governance that echoed through the corridors of time. Number six, bestiality and darker practices. Have you ever wondered about the edges of human desire, where curiosity meets the forbidden and lines blur like the mist over the Andean peaks? The Inca people, guardians of a sprawling empire, dared to tread those edges, delving into realms of the unspeakable, where the story takes a darker turn, where man and beast intertwine in a dance that history would rather forget. In the secluded folds of the Andes, where the air hung heavy with the scent of sacred herbs, a practice shrouded in secrecy thrived. A dance with llamas and alpacas, a dance with the divine and the perverse. This was no mere dalliance. It was a ritual that skirted the boundaries of the known, an act that sent shockwaves through the rigid tapestry of Inca society. In the heart of this enigmatic culture, where the emperor, the Sapa Inca, ruled with divine authority, an edict echoed through the stone halls. Unmarried men shall not keep alpacas in their homes. It was a decree that hinted at a clandestine liaison, a communion between man and beast that defied the norms of the empire. The alpaca, a creature revered for its fleece and gentle demeanor, became an unwitting partner in this dance of shadows. Picture the moonlit courtyards, where forbidden desires cast elongated shadows on ancient stones. Unmarried men, their hearts pounding with a mixture of fear and excitement, stole glances at the silent sentinels of the Andes. The alpacas, innocent in their gaze, unwittingly became accomplices in a dance that would send tremors through the very foundation of Inca society. The reasons behind this dark practice remain veiled in the mists of time. Some whisper of rituals invoking fertility, a desperate plea to the gods for bountiful harvests and prosperous days. Others speak of a deeper connection, a spiritual union with the animals that roamed freely in the Andean highlands. Whatever the motivation, the dance persisted, hidden from the prying eyes of the empire. As the moon waxed and waned, so did the clandestine rituals. The forbidden dance became a furtive ballet, performed in the shadows of the empire's grandeur.
Those caught in the act faced severe consequences, for the Empire, though tolerant of certain deviations, drew a line at the boundaries of the human and the bestial. The stones of Machu Picchu, silent witnesses to the secret dance, held tales of punishments meted out in the name of preserving the sanctity of Inca tradition. Yet, as we delve into the recesses of history, let us not judge with the harshness of contemporary eyes. The Inca people, bearers of a rich tapestry woven with threads of tradition and spirituality, navigated a complex web of beliefs. The forbidden dance with the alpacas may strike us as bizarre, but in the context of their world, where gods walked among men and nature spoke in sacred whispers, it was a thread woven into the intricate fabric of their reality. And that's it from this video. Ever wondered what white plantation mistresses did with black men during slavery? Well, click the video on the screen right now and find out. Thank you.